13,530 pounds, the Montana 380 or 381 toy hauler, uh, depending on the fridge that you choose here at Halet RV of Coldwater, Michigan. Um, this is a really neat concept. It's kind of, it's a, a step before you get to a full-blooded toy hauler, but there's a lot of people who maybe have like one bike or a golf cart or maybe just like a lawnmower or something like that, or, or just they want extra cargo space. This is kind of the, the step beyond a 372 Montana before you get up to a full like Fusion toy hauler. Although what's interesting is the Keystone Fusion does make a version of this called a 410 also. Um, so it gives us all of the living space of a beautiful front living room while still having enough room to move one of the toys. And that's where this comes in. As opposed to a full toy hauler like that beautiful Fusion over there that has somewhere between 10 to 14 or 15 feet of garage space, that means lost living space, this one just has a single little small garage pocket where you could bring like a single golf cart, a single bike, a single whatever. Now you're looking at this and you're going, yeah, but I, I ain't fitting much in there with that sitting as low as it is. Never you worry because this is actually on a power lift to create more garage space as required. And when you are in the traveling position, we find that we've got roughly about a five foot wide by nearly six and a half foot tall cargo space back here. So more than enough for a golf cart with a, uh, a roof on it, or, you know, again, a single bike or something like that. We have people put all kinds of different stuff in these. Some people need the extra height with the power lift, some people don't. That's what's kind of neat about this one. It'll let you sort of build your own adventure and customize how you use this RV to your specific wants and needs. And this right here with the slide clothes, this is one of the reasons why I'm more of a fan of a one slide kitchen in a big fifth wheel. And uh, because we have awesome traveling access to pretty much any of the kitchen storage now. Obviously we have easy access to that refrigerator, but you've got these huge cabinets here that you can pack like crazy, you can get to in transit. If you need to uh, you know, prepare something when you're on the road, all of your kitchen facilities are here and available. You've got a nice little spot you can sit down, take a break, grab a bite to eat. Uh, not to mention the fact that without that extra kitchen slide, we have a huge unobstructed awning as we'll see outside later as we go. And really standing here and looking forward, this is exactly the same as the 374, 375 front living uh, Montana high country you might also find here at Halet RV. Um, you know, it gives you the full time living space that I think a lot of people look for. But again, there's a lot of folks who maybe just have like one bike and maybe you're a, a Florida, Arizona, California snowbird or something like that here from the Midwest. You want the ability to take a bike with you without having to like waste 12 foot of space of the floor plan on a toy hauler so that you still have a nice living area to enjoy when you get there and that's exactly where this one comes in it's a little bit niche based but it's also really cool and i think that there's a lot of people who that kind of fits now before you get too far into the living room something that you can't see i think is really important it's also something that you don't hear at least as much as you could is the um, 15,000 BTU whisper ducted air conditioner here in the living room. Now, a second air conditioner can be added to the bedroom of this that also ties into the central AC to give you a total of 30,000 BTUs of cooling. And that's awesome. That's cool. <laughs> anyway, but what you don't see is that the main air conditioner of any high country or full Montana has a 16,500 BTU heat pump installed on it as well. So that uh, you can also, uh, you know, enjoy a lot of heat without burning up your propane. And that, in conjunction with this electric space heating fireplace that we're looking at, gives you about 22,000 BTUs of heating power without eating up all of your, uh, you know, resources. Which is very handy on something like this. You can, uh, you're going to find a lot of these generator ready in the business. But if you're looking for uh, a full generator install, know that we can take care of that for you here at Halid RV. Also... Um, the uh, electric heating will help you offset the potential heat use that your or propane use that your furnace might uh, enjoy or not enjoy. You know what I mean. Whatever. Use. That's the word I'm looking for. So all of these windows open for airflow with the exception of that front windshield. But you've also got dual sofa side windows over here. Now you see how that one window right there has the nightshade pulled down. That will allow you to kind of enter uh, a little bit of stealth mode to convert these two sofas into high-to-bed sleeper sofas. Also, you will find that that front TV is on a power lift that can go up or down to give you the uh, use and function of an additional front window if you're so inclined. Bam! There you have it. Couples Toy Hauler RV. 
that uh, can still sleep two to four guests for a total sleeping capacity of four to six. And you can sleep two adults on those hide beds. I've done it myself, and I've done it comfortably. It's not too darn bad. Now, of course, remember, we've got those uh, like night blackout shades. If you want to close up all these windows here, you can. But that's another neat thing about these front living rooms like this, is that it just gives you windows all over the place. So if what you're looking for is a really nice scenic view of your destination experience, this is definitely a floor plan that can uh, you know, offer that sort of fun uh, to uh, a potential buyer. Now something that wasn't necessarily easy to see from the viewing angle that we were standing at, but if you take a look here, from the end of this sofa to the beginning of that hide bed you've got at least a good foot plus there. So if you do need to come up, you still want a place to be able to sit down. Maybe you're trying to get the, uh, the guests, or like maybe young grandkids perhaps, to settle down and go to sleep while all watching a movie together. You can still kind of enjoy that experience together. Um, at my house, we still read my kids' stories every night. You know, that's one of those family bonding moments that we have, and this is something that could work well for you. And that's another thing, is that a lot of people will look at toy haulers as an alternative bunkhouse, and this can still function that way due to the uh, total amount of guest sleeping that we have here. I just like that little ceiling accent uh, feature above this power theater reclining seat here. And that is a removable pontoon style armrest, by the way. So if you're looking for more of a love seat without a separation, you got it. If you do like that separation, well, hey, you got that too. Now, down here, I am a big fan of this kitchen arrangement. Um, you know, you'll find this kitchen arrangement all over the place in the Montana high countries in uh, various cougar models. I think it's one of the best kitchens that they've ever come up with. And I love the fact that it doesn't have an island, actually. I, I always kind of feel like islands are a little bit cumbersome. I like the open, expansive nature of this thing here. And I also like the just immense amount of storage that it brings to the table. But before we get there, I do want to take a look up here. We talked about the whisk reducted air with the heat pump built in, but we've also got a residential ceiling fan for some nice airflow around your dining table. A skylight for extra light with a sunshade to keep the sun from cooking you like an ant under a magnifying glass. And we do have a max air vent fan up here, complete with a uh, wall switch to be able to control it so you don't have to be, you know, 10 feet tall. It also has a rain sensor on it, so on a drizzly day, it'll go ahead and close itself up and not cause problems for you. Now, I mentioned earlier, there's the 380TH, which is this one, with the gas electric fridge. Then there's the 381, which has the residential fridge. We felt the gas electric fridge was a better fit for something... That is, uh, it, it's an interesting toy hauler, but still technically in the toy hauler category. Because if you do want to do any kind of off-grid use, a residential fridge is not going to be your best friend. Um, you are going to want the propane capacity and the auto changeover nature of the gas electric fridge versus the electric only. But, if that's not how you plan to use the RV, if you have a different intention, give us a call. Maybe we have a 381. And if not, we'll certainly, we're willing to get you one. We just like to, we see things a certain way. Maybe you see things a different way. But the fact is, you're the one buying it. So we'll build it kind of however you want. We'll just try to give you some of our experience along the way to help you make a better, more educated decision. That's all we're trying to do here. Not say you're wrong. Just say why we think this. <laughs> so blowing open all these uh, kitchen cabinets right here, you see why I get so stoked about this floor plan. Because... It gives you the nice open space in the kitchen area. You can be using the kitchen without somebody constantly be, you know, hip checking you or something like that. There's no way to get like trapped in the corner of this kitchen around an island or whatever. You never feel like someone's in your way. I guess maybe not never, but it's it's just way less common. It's a lot easier. And having that triple shelf uh, space in these overhead cabinets, it's awesome. It's huge. You might need a two or three step stool to get to it, but the fact is you have a just ton of storage space in this kitchen. And that is a convection microwave oven, by the way. That's something that the High Country series didn't always used to have, a more recent update. Note that you also have dual backsplashes. You have one uh, above the stove cooking area, and then another next to the sink. But you notice what you have around those backsplashes? Easy reach power outlets. That is something that Montana is just really, really good about doing. And that kitchen window there is not just for viewing, it is for breeze as well. What's also really cool, and this is a rare find, is that it is located far enough away from the stovetop that you can even put a normal roller shade on that as opposed to a metallic mini blind to meet fire code. Now, uh, instead of an island, which kind of breaks up your prep space into small areas, the uh, like L corner counter that we have here, it's 
huge and it gives us so much prep space it's not even funny but it really doesn't stop there if you notice you've got this little entry hutch or it's sort of like coffee bar i guess you could say right when you walk in the door and there's even a neat little indirect light in here as well so if you want to get up in the morning and it's still dark but you need a little light down here but maybe you don't want to disturb the guests that are up front you don't have to plus Handy little drawer space. There's no such thing as too many drawers. And hey, why not add some more shelves in here? Let's just keep the party going. Now down below in the kitchen prime, we've got uh, four plywood extension uh, drawers that are all like, what's really nice is they're really beveled off so that they're not going to be a splinter factory. And then you see that you've got full storage below the sink. In, uh, and that's a big stainless sink, by the way. I should, I should show you this. One of the basins on this thing is actually super oversized. So you've got a normal size sink and then a mega size sink so that if you do have big pots and pans, you can put that stuff in here, you can get the stuff clean. And this should come as no surprise to anyone with Montana being the number one selling RV to full timers for so, so many years, they've got this figured out. From here, we'll cruise upstairs and I just walked through it so I already have it triggered, but that is a motion sense light on those stairs right there. So that again, if you do need to slip up and down stairs or if a guest on the hide bed has to go to the bathroom at night, they can see the steps without killing themselves. And there you go, bam, it's like magic guys. You know, it's like those Star Trek doors, like anyway. I'm a nerd. I really am a nerd. It's not just a, a, a you know a, a funny little nickname I use to market myself or anything. So the bathroom here has a really interesting feature, and that is first of all it has this massive linen cabinet, and you have to say it like that: massive. You can't just say big. It's massive. It's probably annoying by now, so I'll quit. My wife says I never know when to quit. I think she's right. Um, the porcelain foot flush stool here has all sorts of leg room in front of it, but. I mentioned it had an interesting feature, and that is that this closet, if you look through, you can see how it's actually a little bit fuzzy, little camera focus issue, there we go. Um, it passes through into the bedroom. This is, it doubles as either bedroom or bathroom or combination storage, or this is where you could put a stackable washer dryer or a combo, obviously, if you can fit a stackable, you can fit a combo, or you could do something like put a combo in have a bathroom shelf, and then have a bedroom shelf. Or, frankly, you can arrange it however you want. You're an adult, I'm sure you'll figure it out. <laughs> and if you're a kid watching this, well, hey, thanks for tuning in. Be sure to like and subscribe. My daughter, my daughter says that. When I took my daughter in the end of the night, she goes, okay, guys, be sure to like and subscribe. And I'm like, oh, God, she's been watching her dad on YouTube too much. It's hard to tell your daughter that having a, a YouTube channel is not a viable career path when she watches her old man go to work and do that every day. Anyway, I'm sorry. I'm off way on a tangent here. So no heat vents in the floor by the shower or anything like that. I know a lot of folks aren't really uh, hip to that concept. It's really not a big deal. But if you don't like it, good. This is It's not here. Seamless one-piece fiberglass shower with that nice little corner seat in there. So if you need to get in to sit, to bathe, to, uh, I don't know, maybe shave your legs, maybe shave your back I, I don't know <laughs> <laughs> I bet you didn't think you'd hear about the Montana shave your back edition this morning did you so you've got a nice space right here in the bathroom for a wastebasket but you've got great dedicated storage right here in the bathroom itself and you can see this countertop material here I want to get right up on this this is a pressed membrane a sealed edge counter and you can see how that allows for a large recessed sink down there um, and it's uh, a waterproof material, so you can splash water on there all you want. And how smart is this, that they put the sink uh, faucet kind of off to the side so that it's out of the way, so that you get more useful countertop space. You have room over here for blow dryers, shavers, whatever. Room back here for your toothbrush type stuff and all that. Plus, of course, we just have the full vanity cabinet as well if you need that. Now, the bathroom door kind of just sort of melts out of the way. So no matter where you're coming from, going to, it's always gone. It's always, uh, you know, easy to get through. Now, a neat little thing they do in the bedroom door here, these Montanas, they put a really strong magnet latch on it so that, y you know, it's uh, it's easier to be able to pass through. It's easier to be able to have that uh, left open in transit if, uh, you know, that, that is your preference. Now, back here, one little note, and it's an important note, it's little but it's big, is that this is a 60 by 80 residential queen bed. Normally, Mon usually Montana is synonymous with king bed. This is one of only two floor plans where they can't do that because it would be a little tough to walk around it and they wanted to make sure you still had that walk around space. Um, the, the reason this does not have a full east-west bed slide is because it'd just be too darn heavy with a toy loaded in the back. Plus, this bed 
has a power up down track on it to create a larger garage loading space in the back when you're ready that's one of the really neat things about this is that it gives you kind of a uh, a dual purpose this space does two things and that's something fifth wheels don't do a lot and if it was an east west bed slide that just simply would not be possible now this little seating bench on the end here kind of handy for putting on a pair of pants actually but um this is something that's here as a result of the garage space below now i love this big picture window right here of course it has a privacy shade but when you wake up in the morning you want to look at your campsite you're looking at your campsite not the neighbors now it's a appropriate that I can see a Keystone Fusion through this window right here because if you like this floor plan but you're like no no dude I need a king bed then you need to give us a call and take a look at the 410 Keystone Fusion front living rear bed garage mutant hybrid toy hauler crossover concept floor plan we also offer here at Halet RV because it is a wide body RV that can allow for a king bed whereas the uh, standard eight by uh, eight wide Montana here really kind of struggles to do so so easy direct viewing uh, TV here in the bedroom area and again there's that spot where you have that combination sort of uh, bedroom bathroom washer dryer does it all slices dices Julienne's closet now you've got, speaking of closets, you've got storage on both sides, but you're not really going to feel like you're, you're, you got, uh, you know, gypped on storage here because you've got this full closet slide plus some deep storage uh, spaces on each side of the bed. Case in point, there you go. The left and right sides are individual hanging closets, but they're tall enough that you could also still have like a, uh, uh, some shoes or something on the floor in there with a shared and, but not small, central uh, sort of, wardrobe linen cabinet uh you know you get the idea dresser that's the word i'm looking for that's the word i couldn't figure out in the like man whew, a lot of videos now both sides of the bed again have nice big deep storage there's uh, dedicated headboard pockets but one of the questions that people will have on a model like this is um what if and just a hypothetical you know what if we're not paying attention and we have something set on the bed or we have a, a grandkid or a dog or something like that when this bed goes up how far does it go well i don't need to tell you when i can just show you and there you have it in the all the way up position you can see there's still plenty of room there so if you want to put a big old fancy pillow top padded mattress foam topper whatever on here um nothing's going to stop you from doing it it's not going to hurt anything uh you know it will actually the motor system on this slide mechanism has a function where it will amp out if it re meets too much resistance it will make sure it's like not going to crush a person so they put a lot of safety a lot of thought in mind here although i mean you'd have to be standing straight up and down for that to even be an issue on this and that would just be weird Back outside, we're being blessed with some beautiful sunshine all of a sudden, which is great because everything was gray and dreary and rainy this morning. Although weather like that, it's really exactly when you're going to want a model like this because it, instead of losing 12 to 15 foot of space on a garage, you maintain every ounce of that living space here in this 380 TH Montana at Halet RV. I think that's one of the coolest things. Now, you've got not just more ride stable steps, but also the zero G system, which as you can see is self-supporting. One of the things I specifically uh, had our team do when they were getting this one set up is I said, I wanna park this thing with the nose down really far. And if you notice, we have this leg set longer than that leg, but when we put her down, bam, meets right up with the ground. And that's one of the coolest parts about these steps is that they're always stable. You can always get them to work on just about any campsite. If there's a campsite where you can't get those things to work, it's because you probably shouldn't be there. Now, not only do we have a wider door, but we have a taller door as well. It's a neat thing on uh, all Montanas is that they have a six and a half foot door, not just a 30 inch wide door. Um, they also have a really sharp, glossy skin on this, which, uh, you know, the uh, a lot of people sometimes ask, what's the difference between like the Cougar 367 and the Montana 374? You know, they're both really similar front livings, and it's going to be some detail things like that, like the uh, the high gloss skin, the heat pump that we talked about. There are There's a lot of reasons that there's a significant price gap between them. So remember, this thing is parked nose down to the ground right now, which means that the tail's sticking up, so normally the ramp would have an easier approach than what we're going to see. Again, it's artificially up in the air. If you push the nose up in the air, it's actually great for easy loading. Now with this being a toy hauler, and keep in mind the one that we have in stock could be different, we thought somebody might want to put a generator on it, so we better go ahead and gen prep that. Although again, that'll be one of those cool differences between this and the 410 Fusion, 
is because on a big Fusion with the exact same layout in a wide body with a king bed, you'll have a standard generator installed. And that's why we like having both Montanas and Fusions here at Halet RV, so that you really get the chance to pick your own adventure, you know, and build it the way you want. Um, this has uh, six point auto leveling, so that, uh, you know, it's easy to set up and break camp and it does all the heavy lifting for you. Um, now, Montanas are and have been zero to 100 degree rated since 05 and counting. There's absolutely no question that they're capable of doing that. They've been the number one uh, selling fifth wheel, not only within their category, but to full timers for just such a long, long period of time. In here, you see you got that full privatized docking station, um, and it, that helps protect all your gate valves and everything. But one of the interesting things here, a hiccup that front living rooms have, because you only have one room upstairs, which is the living room, you don't have a bedroom and a bathroom, you get a reduced amount of pass-through storage. And that's one of the areas where having this uh, rear cargo space really comes into play. So first of all, if I duck inside here, you can see that around that mini garage, we have nothing but just all kinds of aluminum skeleton and gusting. It is really heavy duty built. But in a more recent update, they opened up this front section here to be this huge pass-through storage. So if what you're looking for is outside storage beyond just cargo space, you have it. Now, one of the things that's going to throw a lot of people off, they get spooked when they see the third wheel. Nobody likes to be the third wheel, do we? That's kind of been my life. Anyway, that's <laughs> neither here nor there. I digress. <laughs> um, this is one of those things where I think people are afraid because they don't know. Anyone who has towed a triple axle knows how nicely and how smoothly they t uh, can tow in comparison to a tandem axle. There's nothing wrong with double axles, but that triple axle is there for a reason. One, it gives this thing an awesome load capacity because this Montana right here, I think it has the heaviest load uh, cargo capacity of any other Montana at something like 3,700 pounds and change. So um, that triple axle is there, one, to help support the weight of the toys that you put in there, but two, it will smooth out the ride that you have with this thing. Now we are in travel mode currently uh, with that uh, you know, uh, ramp down. Remember that the ramp would normally be a little bit easier angle of attack. Plus we have the, uh, the bed in the up position as we saw earlier. Now, um, this RV also has one of the best patio arrangements that I've really seen. And unfortunately, we're, we're, I can't get the awnings open because we've got that Fusion parked right next to it. But take note of the fact that you have dual power awnings with LED lighting and there's no slides or basically there's almost nothing of any sort obstructing any of that shaded patio space here. So this is an awesome, awesome model. There's going to be a lot of people who actually will use it for like park use with a deck or something like that. And there's a lot of parks that like say, hey, no, you can't have a shed, so this gives you a lawnmower storage. I mean, there's just an incredible number of different ways that you can use this floor plan right here. And one of the other things I, I really like that they did is it still has the, uh, the roof ladder on the side here. It's an always on roof ladder, so you don't have to like try to dismount and store it anywhere. It's just simpler, easier, more effective. And I mean, you can really customize this one to however you picture camping. It doesn't matter if it's kayaks, if it's a motorcycle, if it's a four-wheeler, a golf cart, even if it's just tons and tons of storage, whether it's inside or outside, this one gives you all kinds of goodness. And even back here, we have dual motion sense lighting so that uh, when you do open the door and start loading stuff, the lights will be on. When you uh, you know pull out after one minute, the lights will turn off. And something I didn't mention is that you have a half dozen D-ring tie-downs here, each of those rated for 2,500 pounds. Now, one of the natural questions is, well, how, exactly how much weight can I put back there? And the short answer is, you're gonna have to start loading bags of concrete mix into the back of this thing to overload it. This is a beast. It is a multi-function, flexible beast that can do about anything you want. So whether it's hitching pieces, parts, trades, finance, truck and trailer package, deals, RV delivery, and everything in between, we do it all here at Halet RV. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.